Hi guys, this is Dr. Samani Azad. What we're going to do today is go over and talk about some of the characteristics of the rib cage and also clavicle and scapula on our body as you can see in this model. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the presence of these two structures known as a collarbone or people call them the clavicle. It has two extensions. One is known as the sternal and the other one known as the acromial end. It is in a form of the S shape that is located right on the upper part of the thoracic region. It is connected by this joint to the structure that sits right down the center and is known as the sternum. Sternum is a fancy name for a dagger because they believe that thing looks like a dagger. So if you look at it right down here, you can see the structure that these are the area where the clavicle, this is known as a clavicular notch, sternal clavicular notch right into this area. Then right down the center you have this little notch sitting here, or you can see it in this area. This is known as the jugular notch. Jugular notch are going to be the part of the upper part of the sternum known as the manubrium. Manubrium is going to have some coastal notch where the ribs are going to be attached to it. The upper part, which is the manubrium, is attached to the lower part, which is the body of the sternum, by this joint. This is known as manubrium sternal joint, or also they call them angle of Lewis. From there you come down, you're going to get to the xiphoid process, is a cartilaginous tissue that is sitting right in the lower part. The clavicle is attached by way of the acromial process to another structure in the back known as the scapula. Scapula, it's a very thin structure that you can see here. It has several parts to it. First, to be able to distinguish and get ourselves you know, oriented, you can look at this bump which is extending right down here. This is known as the spine of the scapula. Right above the spine, there is this fossa, which is known as supraspinous fossa. And there's a fossa below it known as the infraspinous fossa. Then this spine, as it extends right to the section, the end part of it is known as the acromial process. So this is going to be the acromial process of the scapula. Then you come toward the lateral side, the lateral side, you can see presence of this articulating part, which is known as the glenoid cavity. If you look here, glenoid cavity is the one that articulates with the head of the humerus and produces your shoulder joint. You come in front of that one, then there's another process here, known as a coracoid process of the scapula right on that part. And the coracoid process is an area that some of the musculature in your arm and also parts of the thoracic cavity musculature are going to be attached to it. Then, as you can see, this scapula that is sitting here, this is going to be the right scapula. Then underneath this one, there's another fossa known as the subscapularis fossa. Also, you can see presence of this little notch this little notch, known as a clavicular notch, which is going to be transmitting a nerve that supply the musculature that are attached to your scapular part. This area on the side, which is known as the axillary, or also known as the lateral border, this is known as the vertebral or the medial border. This is the superior angle, and this one is known as the inferior angle of the scapula. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.